hypersonic cruise missiles, empty threat, or Emperor Putin's crown jewel. Hypersonic cruise missiles are the outcome of Russia's critical technology development program that NATO strategists seem to have underestimated. Meanwhile, the United States is testing the X-51A Wave Rider hypersonic missile. The first experiments of the Americans with hypersonic missiles date back to 1979, but it has not yet made it into production. Have the U.S. corporations lost the long-term race for hypersound to Russia's NPO, Mashina Stroyenia Military Industrial Corporation, which is developing the Zircon 3M22? Could it be because of critical technologies? The term refers to Russia's latest developments in its military arsenal. In addition to Zircon, the program includes Sarmat intercontinental missiles, Kinzhal hypersonic high-precision systems, and Avangard missile systems, which develop hypersonic speeds up to Mach 28. For the record, Avangard systems are already on alert status. Each of these Russian systems deserves special attention. Subscribe to our channel to be the first to know what Russia is arming with today. Arms race? It started long ago. The general public heard about Russia's new 3M22 Zircon hypersonic anti-ship cruise missile in 2019 during Russian president's address to the nation. At the time, the arms race bled the USSR and then led to the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet state. Now Russia is avoiding a military budget competition. The heiress of the Soviets has a different plan, to create an exclusive point-use weapon which deprives entire armies and fleets of combat capability at one stroke. In the military department of the Russian Federation, the new strategy has received the terrible name of decapitation. It is something like the American concept of a prompt global disarming strike, only not so extensive but targeted. This is reminiscent of the myth of the Russian hero knight who cuts off all three heads of a three-headed snake at once with his magic sword. At first, everyone thought that the Zircon 3M22 was a magic sword for fighting the American fleet, and all ships from an aircraft carrier to a destroyer or a frigate were on the line. Now it is clear that ground-based strategic facilities, including those in the United States, are in danger. Let's start from the beginning. An aircraft carrier has to approach the coastline at a distance of 450 kilometers to effectively attack targets deep in the mainland. The design range of the Zircon is 1,000 kilometers. The design speed of it is about Mach 10. This is twice as fast as Britain's newest Sea Scepter cruise missile. A single Zircon hit turns any nuclear-powered aircraft carrier known today into a pile of floating scrap metal with a lethal background radiation. After the explosion, the aircraft carrier will not be able to perform the function of a floating airfield. Radiation will kill every survivor. This is 3,200 crew members plus 2,480 air wing people. The tragedy of Pearl Harbor comes to mind. This catastrophic destructive effect is achieved due to the high speed of the Zircon. When the missile hits, it pierces the stern and explodes inside of the ship. The kinetic energy of a hypersonic object makes it capable of inflicting damage, even if it's an empty bar. Putin called the hypersonic cruise missiles terrifying, and his speech to the Federal Assembly sounded more like a threat. A year and a half later, on Putin's birthday on October 7, 2020, the Russian military launched another new hypersonic cruise missile. The spokesman for the Russian Ministry of Defense stated that the Zircon's flight speed exceeded Mach 8, the height was 28 kilometers, and the distance to the surface target was 450 kilometers. It's the very distance that was previously considered safe for aircraft carriers. It is noteworthy that the launch was carried out in the waters of the White Sea in the Arctic Ocean, from the board of the Admiral Gorshkov frigate at a target in the Barents Sea. However, it turned out later that the launcher can be placed on land. What amazing versatility! The tradition to please Russian leaders on significant dates has remained in the country since Soviet times. However, a roll back to the previous position was noticed not only in Russia's attitudes to the West, but also vice versa. The 2nd, 6th, and 7th fleets of the United States are pressing Russia from all sides, north, east, and south. The superiority of the U.S. Navy is undeniable. The second fleet, which was revived in 2018 specifically to contain Russia in the North Atlantic, includes four former U.S. presidents, Dwight Eisenhower, Theodore Roosevelt, George Washington, and Harry Truman. 
so they joke in the Navy. It refers to the nuclear aircraft carriers, formidable and, until recently, the only argument for dominations in the waters of the northern seas. The activation of the Second Fleet's maneuvers in this part of the world is not accidental. The world is waiting for a confrontation, and Zircon, apparently, begins to play a major role. Therefore, Vice Admiral Keith Blount, the head of NATO's Allied Maritime Command, is sounding the alarm despite the support of the aircraft carriers named by the presidents. According to him, Russia is sending more and more submarines to the area where they can threaten NATO's ships. Russian Navy increased the intensity and the range of crews to its service ships and submarines. What Daryl L. Claudel, Commander, Submarine Force, U.S. Navy says sounds like panic. The Vice Admiral said it was now dangerous to consider the continental United States a safe haven from Russian troops. The Vice Admiral's fears are well grounded. The fact is that the Zircon missile system is effective not only as a ground-based deterrent or a weapon for frigates and aircraft carriers, submarines are also capable of carrying cruise missiles, and this is a completely different level of danger. When you know that Russia has a Severodvinsk submarine that is capable of carrying the Zircon, the decapitation concept takes on a deeper meaning. The two submarines, similar to Severodvinsk, will soon leave the slipways. In total, there are nine submarines of the Severodvinsk type within the framework of the Project 885 Yasin. There is also a project for the production of Russian nuclear submarines of the fifth generation named Husky. The vice admirals are right. These submarines on combat duty in neutral waters off the west or east coast of the United States are a big threat. With proper maneuvering, a hypersonic cruise missile fired from a submarine will reach the target in five minutes. The decision-making centers, this is what Russian military strategists call command posts and strategically important objects, might become a target. For example, the U.S. Navy radio station in Jim Creek, Washington, or the long-suffering Pearl Harbor on the islands in the Pacific Ocean. The kinetic energy of the hypersonic missile is enough to reach the deepest basements and bunkers, destroying concrete arches and ceilings. The explosion will occur deep inside the object, no matter how reliably it is protected. It's time to talk about the construction of the Miracle Weapon and the power plant that accelerates the missile to unprecedented speeds. The cross-section of the missile is unusual. It reminds of the fairing of a car designed to develop record speeds along the bottom of salt lakes. At least, this is how the Zircon prototypes looked like. Despite a wide PR campaign run in the Western media, among all others, the Russians hid the appearance and the most private technical details of the combat specimens. This is not surprising, because it is necessary to create a sufficiently strong construction to ensure a high flight speed, which is the key advantage of the new missile. Obviously, the construction know-hows are applied here, and they are carefully hidden. Here is what military analysts have calculated based on the experience of similar developments in the West. The well-known 3C-14 Universal Ship Complex is used to launch the Zircon. According to some sources, the length of the missile body is 8 to 10 meters. From other sources, it is known that the length of the Zircon is about 6 meters, and the weight of the warhead is 300 kilograms. The temperature during flight inside the plasma cloud is over 1500 degrees Celsius, which means that the Zircon cannot do without space technologies like beryllium alloys, new ablation materials, composites based on barren and carbon fibers, and other refractory plasma coatings. It is also clear that it is impossible to accelerate a hypersonic object with a traditional jet engine. Therefore, the Zircon is armed with a new secret engine, which belongs to critical technologies. The fuel was also developed under this program. The Russians are using a new ramjet engine and a high-calorie synthetic aviation fuel named Declan, which acts on the unit like an adrenaline shot to a patient in a coma. The Zircon overcomes the enemy's air defense zone in a cloud of plasma in seconds. The unprecedented speed makes detection even a little pointless, because neither ships nor ground-based air defenses have time for a target acquisition and destroying a single missile. And there are no suitable means either. For example, the air defense of the Royal Navy of Great Britain is capable of shooting down air targets flying at speeds not exceeding 3,700 kilometers per hour. Due to the crazy speed and the ability to fly several meters above the ground where ground-based radars are powerless, it is problematic to detect the Zircon. It's fantastic. For the record, 
The maximum height of the trajectory of the new hypersonic missile can be just 30 to 40 kilometers. The operational corridor is very wide. In addition, the Russian hypersonic missile is equipped with an advanced navigation system, another latest development, about which Western strategists have only a vague idea. However, military analysts point to certain weaknesses. For example, ramjet rocket engines do not tolerate intense maneuvering. A dive from a height of several kilometers and a further flight tens of meters above the ground is a very real scenario. But when the missile turns sideways during the movement, the intensity of the airflow in the air intake changes and the engine can stall. If this does not happen, the crew of the attack ship will have less than 90 seconds to acquire the target for escort, open the fire, and hit the Zircon at least on the near border of the blast zone. Any practitioner will confirm that this time is not enough to prepare for shooting. A ground-based radar is capable of detecting a hypersonic missile at a height while protecting ground targets. Detecting low-flying missiles requires radar stations at a height. The United States has such technology. We are talking about the J-Lens system, which consists of two radar-equipped balloons positioned 10,000 feet above the U.S. East Coast. They are capable of tracking low-flying cruise missiles. It remains to teach these systems how to interact quickly and make decisions with lightning speed. Obviously, it is necessary to use artificial intelligence. It is possible that this is precisely what American strategists are doing now. NATO headquarters knew about the testing of non-trivial weapons against aircraft carriers and destroyers of the United States. But because of their own failures, they did not believe in the success of the Russians. And of course, they could not imagine that the Zircon was capable of carrying a threat directly off the coast of America. Critical technologies are indeed effective. The Zircon is not an empty threat, even at the current stage of its development. Although it is not a jewel, because the 1,000 plus kilometer range has not yet been reached. However, if the name Satan was not taken, the Zircon cruise missiles would certainly have received this ominous name.